Tony? You tried to say it was my fault. I said it wasn't. I never said it wasn't. Not nah, early on. I don't know. I, I love giving Tony a hard time. It's like I come in here and I think about what I'm going to give Tony a hard time about. And mostly because he just does such a great job that I need to like feel better about myself. Because um, he's about as, as uh, trusty as it comes. So, uh, But anyway, so if you hear me give him a hard time, it's just what we do with each other. He tries to give me a hard time too, so... Um, anyways, so, blah, blah, blah. I just want to go through these, these scriptures. This is so that you have understanding of what it is and so that you have um, a better understanding of what it is talking about and what it's not talking about. And what I'm going to tell you right now is that it's not about losing our salvation, okay? And we're going to do a lot of context reading around these verses. So turn to Colossians 1. We'll read a verse, we'll pray, and then I want to read the context. So Colossians 1, verse 22 and 23. Okay, so some people look at this and they say, see, you can lose it if you don't do the right thing. Okay? Um, if you look online, especially if we get to Ephesians today, um, what seems like such an easy verse to not be um, about losing our salvation, like we would use it as like clearly you cannot use it, lose your salvation, the first thing that pops up on Google is that they use that verse as to say, no, you can Okay, so, you know, the attacks are uh, here on the scriptures, and we need to know and understand how to defend these simple things. All right? So, verse 22, Colossians 1. In the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight, if ye continue in the faith grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Dear Lord, uh, we're just so thankful for these scriptures and that we have them uh, to really know what is going on and that we can know your will. Um, it's not an unknowable thing. It's not something we have to search for in our lives and in the circumstances, um, but actually something we can know and apply to every day and every hour, and we're just so thankful for that. I thank you for these saints who love your word. And um, just the fellowship we have in that, that we can come together and uh, practice grace. And all these things we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so see, they, they, they put this if in there. Uh, they use this if as like, oh, see, you can lose it if you don't do these things. Okay? And so I want to just kind of read some context here in Colossians before we go too far any other verses. And we are going to hop around a little bit as always. But I want to read the context there. And what I'll say up front is that one of the, the, for me, the key in here in verse 22, which is why I read verse 22 with it, um, is in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable. Okay? So um, presenting, there's something about presenting us going on here. Okay? So, one, we need to establish the fact that uh, Colossians are saved. Okay? So we're not writing to people who you know, may or may not. Be. This isn't a letter to the lost. This is a letter to people who are saved, and you can see that. And it's not like Romans where he's going through and he's explaining who you were in the past, and then, then we're getting to explain the nitty-gritty details of the gospel, and then we're going on to understand what, what your salvation does for you. Colossians here, you sum that up right in the beginning, and then he goes on to talking about what Colossians is about. So I want you to see here, okay, verse 4 in chapter 1. We're talking to believers here, right? Chapter 1, verse 4. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which ye have to all saints. Okay, so we're talking to, we're talking to saints already here. Verse 5. For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven... Where have ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel? There is a hope already laid up for them, and they've heard it where? In the gospel. All right, and they already have fruits from this, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth what? Fruit. As it doth also in you since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God and truth. So he's writing to people who are already saved. Okay, and you're going to see even more. Drop down to verse 9, um, and there's this prayer here, okay, um, and he prays about their walk, 
Okay, well, I'm, I feel like every time I'm up here I talk about this, but that's because it's so important and Paul talks about it so much, is, is our walk. You already are this, therefore walk it. Okay, verse 9, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So, like I said, I don't know, did I say this already? Um, his, we can be filled with the knowledge of his what? His will, okay? And I'm taking a little, few little rabbit trails here and there, but staying with the same, we're just reading the context here. You can understand his will, okay? You don't, I go to this coffee house, and I, I do a lot of my, like, school or study or get ready for this or other stuff, personal studies, and, um, it's like a, apparently this coffee house is like where all different types of Christians meet, okay? And I don't, I, I haven't really talked to too many of them, but you know, you can hear everyone talking to everyone and having conversations. And like every conversation is like, well, when I separate myself and I go somewhere alone, that's when I can hear him talk to me, okay? And it, it it, I mean, this is like, and I know some of the churches they're from because they wear, you know, they wear on their T-shirts where they are from. I'm not, I'm not attacking them. What I'm saying is, is like they read this, and they read it, and they're like, oh, well, all I need to do is just pray more, get closer to God. I need to do something. If I go separate myself, go over here, go over there, do this. What? Pick a different kind of Christian. You just go do something. What is it telling you right here? I want you to be filled with his knowledge and his will. And then he goes on to explain what that is. You can understand what that is now, so you don't have to search for it, so you can have that understanding. You can have that knowledge of that will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And really what it is is you then applying that to your life. Okay? And that's what he wants us to do. Is This, is, this describes what he is doing and what his will is. Okay, we don't need to go look for it in our circumstances or hear a voice, right? I was up at a uh, church in Wisconsin, I don't know, a month and a half ago, and the guy stood up there and he said, uh, what did he say? He said that many Christians might disagree with this, but, you know, I was saved, or I, I, could, I knew God was working in my life even prior to me being saved. That I was, he was, God was already working on me so that he could use me, okay? And this is people within Right Division Grace Movement, okay? So, so these verses, like I know this seems like really simple and eternal salvation and stuff like this, but we have to know these, these basic things and be able to uh, understand them for ourselves, know them, and be able to just surely stand on the more sure word that we have. And because Christianity just has no idea how to defend it, okay? They just, they, people feel special when they hear God in their voice down in their basement alone. And then they can go to the coffee house and tell people about it, right? It's a pride thing, okay? People love it. I mean, you just, that's what it is, okay? Okay, sorry, that was a rabbit trail. I had to get it off my chest. But it's, it's, it's everywhere. I mean, we're going to read today. And you see, the will of God is knowable, okay? Don't be fooled that it's not. It doesn't have to be some special thing that comes to you. This is special, this book right here. This is so special, all right? And it, lasts, it has lasted longer than anything else in this world, okay? Um, verse 10, okay? That, so, so knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to what? His glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving excuse me, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and then translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Okay. Is that kids? Yeah. Upstairs? Oh, okay. 
One kid. Okay. I don't know. It's my son. All right. Okay. You know what? That's what we'll go with. I like that better. It's grandma. Okay. Uh, Verse 14. Okay. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Does that sound like something they don't have already? That, that to me is that we have redemption through his blood. Okay? Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created. And here it goes through how he's, he's the head of, this is how he's going to be ruler of all. Okay? Drop down to verse 20. Just because I don't want to take forever. I want to get through this whole thing today. Verse 20, and having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or in heaven, all things are being reconciled by him, okay? And he's done that by his work. 21, and you, okay, so now we're going to talk about you, that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, After the comma here, what does it say? Yet now hath he reconciled. Have you been reconciled? Can we, can, I mean, there's no, the understanding here that this would then be talking about something we can lose is kind of silly, okay? The more we read all of this, it's something we hath, he hath done to us. We have redemption, okay? Verse 14. All these things we have in our possession, Okay, when you give a gift to somebody, man, uh, my nose, um, you don't, I mean, you don't take that gift. It's, here's a gift, right? It's freely given, okay? And you that were sometimes alienated in your mind by your wicked works, yet hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death. And here's what I want to Here's kind of what I want to show you. To present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. His goal is that here I gave you this gift. Paul, since verse 9, has been, was, was praying for him in verse 9 that they have the understanding that they actually learn what their identity is and, and walk in it and that you can know his will, apply that to your life. And how, how do you do that? Well, if you continue in the faith grounded and settled. Well, okay, so if your new identity is this, this new thing, well, how would you stay fruitful in that? How would you stay, um, if you went back to who your old identity was, well, then you're just going to live like you always were before. But if you want to have fruit in your life and you want to you wanna be something that God presents to you holy and unblameable and approval in his sight, well, that you're going to do that by staying in the faith that you understand, right? You understand that you're reconciled. You understand that you have the forgiveness of sins. Um, the cross has already done that. You have a new identity. So it's something that um, later in Colossians in, in chapter 3, and this is what I'm trying to kind of show you, is that from last, last week we went through thankfulness, right? And we went through thankfulness in verse 6 and verse 7. And verse 6 in, in chapter 2, chapter 2, verse 6, it says, As ye therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We, 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 the beginning of Colossians here tells you very simply, you have already have redemption, you've already been reconciled, you have all these things. Now start learning, comprehending what that identity is. And here's how you do that. And he spends a little bit of Colossians doing that and working into that. And that's why verse six is ye have, verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 6, As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. So the way you do that is by if ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the what? The hope. Right? The hope of the gospel. We have a certain hope that we're headed towards. Okay? If I told you I was going to give you, I don't know, $100,000 tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Wouldn't we all? If I was going to give you $100,000, oh, who, maybe it's not me. It's whatever. You're going to get $100,000 tomorrow. 
wouldn't you already live today like you have it? You'd already start thinking, oh, well, I'm going to, when I get that $100,000, I'm going to pay off this debt, I'm going to do this, I'm gonna do this, and you know it's for sure, right? You would live your life now, even though you don't have the $100,000. You know it's coming tomorrow. You would live it as if you already have it, right? That is this, okay? You already have the hope of the gospel. You already, the, the, it is an etern, you are eternally sealed in it. The thing is, if I was going to give you $100,000 tomorrow, but you still acted like you were, you know, didn't have any money, right? That'd be silly because you know $100,000 tomorrow. You better start getting prepared. You better start living in a way that would be up to the standard of what that is. And then that's just money, and that's a silly example. But it gets the point across, right? That is this. Start living the new identity that you have, because you have it. It's coming, whether you like it or not. Even if you try to walk against it, the only way that the Lord wants to present you holy and unblameable at his appearing, at that judgment seat of Christ, okay? Um, <clears throat> so in later in Colossians in chapter 3, verse 24, I'm kind of, you know, go read this context. I'm not going to read this all today. Verse 24, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord, the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive the wrong for which he hath. And I, I, I've pointed this out a few times. Go over to Ephesians. <clears throat> oh, I always forget where it is. Ephesians 6, I think. 7 and 8. Yeah, so Ephesians, Colossians, they're parallel passages, right? Parallel books. Um, same exact context here in, in chapter 6, and it says, with, with good will doing serv- uh, chapter 6, verse 7, with good will doing service as to the Lord and not men, knowing that so whatsoever, what? Good. So there's a reward that can be, you can get a reward that's bad, you can get a reward that's good. I do want to say one thing about the judgment seat of Christ, is that you are already going to show up blameless sinless okay this is not a judgment seat of christ where you you're going to show up and like okay well you didn't do good enough and you're going to hell that's what people who say you don't have eternal salvation make it into be okay if you're going to hell you already know that okay you're going to be resurrected in the in the in your sentence for the lake of fire right so you're going this isn't a judgment seat of christ of like good or bad in the sense that bad is bad is the lake of fire and good is you're in heaven, this is the sense of what have you built up in yourself to be useful for the Lord, right? So when you, the U.S. is, you know, a constitutional republic, and a lot of that is based on scriptures, okay? And so when we elect officials to rule, I'll just say it that way, simply, um, do we look at them as kings, or do we look at them as people who serve us? supposed to serve us right now I'm not saying that's what it is now it's a mess now but the original intent was that they would serve the people right my understanding of this to this point is that's that's what we're you're building up right now an ability to be to have service okay when we're when we're in the next in the next chapter I'll say it that way Right at the judgment seat of Christ, how much? How, what's the ability you have to serve? Right, and I don't want to go too much into that because that's a whole other thing. But there, you know, the parables there with with how much you how much have you built up in yourself? Okay, there's there's a lot of understanding there that we're not going to get like rewards how we think of it as like oh man I'm going to be like the you know the 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 ruler of 10 cities and that those people are just going to serve me and I'm going to eat grapes and that's the reward we're looking for. It's quite the opposite. The Lord came down and was our, in his earthly walk, right? And he was a servant to us, right? The idea is that you build up this, this, the will of God in all spiritual understanding so that you can be of service. The judgment seat of Christ is, okay, what is... What is your ability and where can I put you that, you know, did you live the new identity? Have you been practicing it? All right? Did you live by faith? 
Verse, verse 23, if ye continue, oh, verse 22 in chapter 1 of Colossians, in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unprovable in his sight. He wants to present you, okay, the body of Christ, you as the body of Christ. And you do that by, if you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, right? That, that rooted and built up and not moved away from that certain hope that we have, right? You're going to get $100,000 tomorrow. It's a certain thing. You already know where you're headed, which you have heard. And so, you know, he goes down. Um, I don't even know why I make notes. I just go all over the place. Um, and he goes down, and you, and you see verse 24 through 27. Paul's talking about how he's been made a minister to make this known to you. And verse 28, Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that, ye may, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. The maturity level of what your new identity is in Christ Jesus. And that's why, that's where we, that's where we labor. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Um, okay, so let's now we can flip around. I wanted to read the context so we kind of understand it there. Um, go to 1 Corinthians 3.14, just a little bit about the judgment seat of Christ. 1 Corinthians 3.14. <clears throat> Okay, we all, these are all scriptures that we know. We've read together many times. Uh, verse 10, According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our cornerstone. He is our foundation everything in him is sure and that's where you're going to build you're going to you're going to labor according to that and not your own kingdom right now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver precious stones wood hay or stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is are you working cuz you want to you want your are you trying to make your flesh better and in the flesh, you're going to show the Lord that you're worthy. All right, are you going to build up that, that wood, hay, and stubble? Or are you going to, how in Colossians 2, verse 6 and 7 there, you're going to be rooted in Him, be built up in Him, right? And let His work through you is what, are you building up Him in your life? The gold, the silver, the precious stones. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Okay, so there is, there is this reward. And the reward is you can't, you got to get out of thinking um, the fleshly, our fleshly rewards, right? I mean, you see religions do that all the time. That's exactly, I mean, so I'm going to mention names here, but that's how it goes. Um, that's exactly what the Mormon church is, right? I mean, their ruling is that they're going to go be a Jesus Christ in another planet and that that's their planet, right? And they get to, they get to like have that planet as their own and that's how it keeps going, right? Jesus Christ isn't actually God. He's just this um, another person just like you who lived good enough to have his own world, okay? <laughs> Sounds silly, but that, like, that, my, my, I bring that up because that's who... That's the kind of stuff that the flesh comes up with, right? This reward here that we we're gonna give, that we're gonna get, is um, some sort of fleshly reward. And what I'm trying to stress to you is that you don't have to be. You are eternally saved. Okay, you're gonna show up at that at that judgment seat of Christ, not to receive a bad to go to the lake of fire, but you're gonna receive good or bad depending on. <clears throat> Did you, did you learn who he was? Did you put this in your mind so that you can be of some service there? Right? Romans 14. Romans 14.
start in verse 8. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And we, we read this last time and probably the time before too. So we're just kind of, I want you guys to soak this in. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before what? The judgment seat of Christ. Now, I'm reading this so you know I'm not just like making up these terms, okay? For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Let us not therefore judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. I know and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat, for whom Christ died. Let, then, let not then your good be evil spoken of, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that, it, for he that in the, these things serveth Christ is acceptable to God and approved of men. Okay, so we see the judgment seat of Christ there in verse, uh, wasn't it 10? Yeah, verse 10. Okay, and um, I... I I usually I'm after a, a verse, but I want to give you guys context, so I like to read them all. Um, but as believers, we're going to stand there as judgment seat of Christ, okay? This is where the reward is given out. Like I said, there's a million ideas about that. The goal is to be presented, and we see that in Colossians, right? We're reading this. The goal is to be presented at the judgment seat of Christ as holy and unblameable and improvable in His sight. He wants to present you that way, and that is starting now. And the result of those things will be presented at the judgment seat of Christ. Like I said, the judgment seat of Christ is not a guilty or innocent type of judgment. The sin is already paid for and forgiven when we trust the Lord as our personal Savior. Our state is already sinless, and we already have our possession, the new identity that we are sealed into. Okay? And we read that context in Colossians there, and you saw that. We are reconciled, right? We are already a new creature, correct? So go to 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. Uh, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, and we all know how we get in Christ, we believe, right? We believe he died for our sins, was buried in resurrection. He buries your old man, right? You we have new life in his resurrection. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things of, are of God, who hath reconciled, hath reconciled, another again, right there, us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay? Um, Galatians 6.15 we have enough time here. Verse 14, Galatians 6, 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but what? A new creature, right? There's something new going on here. It is your identity, and we have a hope in the gospel, and we know where we're headed. Okay? Um, so we're already a new creature in Jesus Christ, right? Created in righteousness and true holiness. We have a new standing in front of God, right? Prior to being saved, we would have been raised from the dead to receive our sentence in the lake of fire. But you're no longer part of that, okay? 
and he's calling you now to go, okay, this is your new identity. You have the $100,000 tomorrow. And now we, are in ra- now we are raised in our reward of the inheritance. Okay, we read Colossians 3.24. Go over to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians uh, 2, I believe. Um, we'll read starting in, uh, we'll just start in verse 15. Who both killed the, Ju- killed the Lord Jesus Christ and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins all way for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in the presence not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Look, we are going, that is what's going to happen. Okay? That's why I'm reading all these verses so that you, like, you understand that you are going to be presented there. Okay? The, and he wants to, Colossians 2 there. I'm going the wrong way. Colossians 1, sorry, Colossians 1. Verse 22, or let's start at verse 21, now that we've kind of read all that. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet hath he now, yet now hath he reconciled. He's already removed you from that. He's already killed the old man. Okay, you just need. That's where the you. If you're living back in the old man, you're not living by what faith, right? You're going. No, it's still a thing. But our our understanding, our spiritual understanding of our inner man, is such that. We know that he hath reconciled us in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. He wants to present you. You are going to be presented there. Okay? So he's, he's, he's reminding you that that is our new life. Okay? This, this is our new identity. Just as if you had $100,000 tomorrow, that's your new identity. Okay? Um. So Colossians 1, 1, 23 here is speaking about staying grounded and settled and not moving away from that hope of the gospel. And you, you need to continue in, in the life you were given in the gospel and the hope that is there. And our goal is that verses 24 to 29, right? And then continuing there. And we, we read a lot of chapter 2 and chapter 3 uh, last time I was up here, so I'm not going to go do that, okay? Um. All right, we're going to stop uh, as far as Colossians, and I want to go to Ephesians 4. So let's go to Ephesians 4. Now, I would think in this room that this, this verse was like, I would never bring this up as losing your salvation. I don't know. To me, this seems like crazy to think that this would be a verse that uh, you could use, that you could lose this, your salvation, but it's out there. Okay, so Ephesians 4, verse 30. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay, so people look at this and they say, well, you can, you can basically do something to have the Holy Spirit leave you. Even though, like, like a lot of, I don't know, I have to, I just, it drives me a little crazy, I guess. Because we just we we look at these things and it's so simple, right? But people make things so complicated. And the first thing that I mean, I'll be honest, the first thing that pops up is at least when I searched it was a thing from the Catholics, and it's like CatholicAnswers or something dot org or dot com or something like that. 
And you know, they basically use this as like, well, you'd have to basically take this verse out of context to say that um, you're, you're sealed and can't lose your salvation. Yes. Yeah, it's, ama- it's, a, like, it's, it's like amazing that you can come up with this stuff, okay? <sighs> but I do want to talk about it because you guys, you guys have access to people I'll never be able to talk to, right? And you might run into these things where people use this and you're just so blown out of the water that you don't even like, like what, right? So we need to be able to stand on these things, and I I just like going through it with you. I enjoy going through it with you on these simple things so that you can have conversations that go, really, really, let's look at that, right? And you can feel confident in explaining to others, right? Have some, there's fruit, you standing in the faith and that hope then has fruit that others be edified, right? The Christ through you, all right? Um, Okay, verse, uh, let's, let's drop back a little bit then. I'm going to go a little fast here, okay? Uh, verse 20. We'll just start at verse 20 because I don't want to go all the way back. Uh, but you go read the context, all right? Verse 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so, be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, and the truth is in Jesus that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. If you were lost, would you even have the ability to be renewed in the spirit? No, right? You already have this new spirit, and you need to embrace that versus the old, right? It's not like Christ, the moment you get saved, and, oh, uh, you know, you're saved now. Okay, I'm taking you up to heaven, right? He leaves us here so that we can have fruit in the body of Christ so that others can also hear this message, okay? And so the way we do that is being by renewed in the spirit of your mind. Verse 24, and that ye put on the new man, which is after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So what you're saying is the new man, like this is what they would argue then. They're saying that the new man, which is after God created in righteousness, which you have, you can somehow corrupt that. It's kind of what they're saying, right? They're saying that like this, this righteousness and true holiness could be corrupted by you going and doing something. It's kind of silly, right? And actually, in the context here, it says that if you're going to go do something that is not worthy of being created in righteousness and true holiness, what are you doing? You're actually going to go back to the old man to do that, right? You're not corrupting the new man. The new man is going to be presented at the judgment seat of Christ as perfect and sinless. Wherefore, put away lying, speak Every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands. The thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the believers. Live in the new man, and that way others can be edified, right? Ah, Verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are sealed to show up at the judgment seat of Christ, the reward of our inheritance. We are joint heirs with Christ. You're going to show up there. You're already sealed into it. Every day that you decide to live in the old man, you're just not living in the new identity that you have. Okay, Your new man cannot sin. You cannot sin. Okay, When you die, all the stuff that you did in the old man, gone. Right? So it's not a matter of like trying to make your flesh better. It doesn't say, okay, in the new man, be in the new man and now try to do good things so that your old self 
who you used to walk in and the spirit of the understanding that you used to and the lost darkness of your mind, you're going to start making that better, right? No, it just says it's dead. It's gone, right? That is our, our new identity. Our new identity is just sitting in the new identity of Christ and letting that walk in us and focus on who you are, set your affections on the things above, Stop saying, oh, I need to stop doing this, I need to stop doing this, and making laws for yourself, and making the flesh, I need to read more, and I want to show God that I'm going to do this for him. That's flesh stuff, okay? Renewing your mind according to the new man who is already sinless, you're just trying to comprehend that and apprehend, right? So verse 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Um, I want you to go back to Genesis, uh, I thought it was 5. I thought I had it written here. Yeah, Genesis 5, 6, I think. Okay, you can hold your hand in Ephesians if you want. Um, if not, you know where it is. Genesis 5. So the other thing about this is you're not, it's not you, well, this is my understanding and my belief, okay? This is not you grieving that you have the Holy Spirit, okay? This is the Holy Spirit grieving that you're not walking in the new identity, okay? Um, and you look at one of the, the first times here that grieve is used. I hope I have this verse right. Is it six five? Is that what I meant to say? What did I tell you? Five six? Well, shoot. I think it's six six. Yeah, this makes more sense. Okay. Genesis six, we're just gonna start in five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it what? Grieved who? Him at his heart. Okay, that is, that's the grieving going on. I mean, this, that's my belief, that this is, and is not, hey, you, believer, grieve that you have, are a part of the Holy Spirit and the new man. I mean, you can already do that by going back to the old man. This is, don't grieve the Holy Spirit who's with you, making intercession for you, right? By going and doing all those corrupt things, but instead walking in the light, okay? And guess what? You're going to do things that do grieve him, right? That if you have an expectation that from now until you die, that you're just going to like, you know, constantly do the right thing is is silly, okay? But setting your affections on where you're going on the earth above or on the heaven above where we're headed that is how you stay out of going to the old man okay and it's just comprehending who you are who your new identity is let all uh verse 31 back to ephesians 4 and i'm trying to go quick here Um, verse 31, Ephesians 4, 31, Let all bitter, bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake, what? Hath forgiven. hath forgiven you. Does that sound like something like, oh, you went back to the old man, you're not forgiven now? No, right? Even in the context even in the context, I didn't have to go anywhere else, that you can see that this is not your eternal salvation, okay? And if it's something you're thinking about in your mind, spend some time reading and going through this context. It's worth it, okay? Um, just for sake of time, I wanted to read some of this, but we need to quit. Um, verse, verse 15, uh, chapter 5, verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
Wherefore be, be ye not unwise, but understanding what, here it is again, what, what? What the will of the Lord is, okay? He's made it known. The will of the Lord is known. All you've got to do is redeem the time that you have because your evil day is coming, okay? And the days that we walk around are evil. Don't waste your special new status as a way to go back and freely live in the evil you once were because your evil day is coming, right? I'm going to stop there, um, but, uh, you know, get out there and redeem the time. These are things that we can stand on. We have how, I love it in Colossians there, and uh, you don't have to go there, but in Colossians, Your walk is faith in the faith, grounded and settled. And be not moved away from the hope of the gospel. You already have a certain expectation in the gospel. All you need to do is redeem the time now. Okay? Run in the race to gain those who are lost. All right? Because we are, you know, we're working here in the body of Christ, and we represent him as ambassadors. So keep working on it, and I think it's, Having conversations with people is the best thing you can do. And, you know, they may not want to always have the conversation, which is fine. And you don't have to talk to them. But there are people out there who do want to talk. But, uh, you know, you don't want to not be ready for the conversation. And so that takes, you know, that takes you time that you need to take on your own. Right? I can't do it to, um, to be ready for those conversations, right? You don't want to let the criminal steal things in your house for lack of being ready that they're going to come in. <laughs> um, like, if I'm going to die, it's because, well, I don't want to say that. <clears throat> I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. Uh, okay, so we're, 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 we're done with this one, with eternal salvation. Like I said, let me know if you do want this PowerPoint. I, I will uh, print it off and give it to you. I can email it to you if you like it in an email form. If you like it, if you don't want it at all, that's totally cool too. Um, but uh, but yeah, let's pray. Dear Lord, we're just so thankful that who we are in you and uh, that you've done all the work because history has shown that we clearly cannot do it. Um, you don't even really have to look far um, in history. You just look at your own life and we know that we're not worthy, but you are. And uh, we can rest in you and just start to comprehend who we are in you and, um, and, and the fruit that uh, you have through us. And we're just so thankful that we have this gospel um, where we can relax on your cross and your payment. And I uh, thank you for those in the room and this Bible. Amen.